Welcome back to New to Medical Device Sales. I am your host, Jacob McLaughlin, and today we're switching up the show. We're bringing you a guest that's here to help you for your future. Uh, the big thing I want to do is this is good for for be for people, excuse me if I can talk, too much coffee this morning, uh, for people who are breaking into medical device sales, but also just, just for anybody, right? This is going to be for planning for your future. How are you going to start investing for your future so you know you're taken care of? So today's guest, we're so excited to have, we have Daniel Rooney, who is with Northwestern Mutual. He is a financial advisor who actually specializes with medical device sales. Um, and I'm, I won't take too much of the thunder, so we'll bring Daniel on and, and just let him explain kind of how his background and and why we're having him on the show today so daniel welcome to the show hey jacob good morning man good to be here today yeah thank you so much for taking time out on this early morning yeah no worries happy sunday to you i'm caffeinated i'm ready to roll <laughs> oh I'm, I'm with you i got the the, the coffee cup all ready to go and, awesome. and bring it in but yeah, I want to just kind of go into your background a little bit. Um, you're a financial advisor, but you're a little twist there is why we're having you on the show and and because you connect with the medical device sales community. Can you kind of give us a little bit of background about yourself? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I spent well over a decade, probably closer to 12, 14 years in medical device myself. I carried the bag in Los Angeles for a spinal cord stimulator, wore the lead vest, lugged the, the product around in my trunk. Um, got into some leadership, started traveling, did the startup thing for MedDevice, then did the startup that went IPO in MedDevice, the whole nine yards. So the community is really close uh, to my heart. Uh, it's, it's a lifestyle. It's not a job. And uh, ultimately what happened was, you know, you, you grow in life. I started a, a family. I was about to have my second daughter a couple years ago and really started to evaluate, hey, where is my future? How do I navigate being a dad that's available and not traveling every week? And, uh, you know, you combine that with a couple of things that were going on in my life. One, my family were financial advisors. They've been doing it for 40 years, worked for uh, Morgan Stanley, been around it my whole life. And uh, with that, when I would be on these trips or I'd be in sales training or, or some version of working with reps or doctors, financial conversations always came up had some acumen around it and got into some really robust conversations about planning, investments, how to protect the family. And it just organically spun out like, hey, there's a niche here for me with the past of my family and with my experience to that. And then wanting to potentially make a shift to get out of travel and, and be around for the daughters. And so here we are, flash forward two and a half years and Building the brand on with you, excited to talk about it. We're doing seminars for you know academic centers, at Emory, UCLA, Rush, et cetera. So uh, excited, excited to be here, excited to help the community, you know, learn more, learn more about the future and how to plan for it. I love it. I love it. Yeah, and no, that's what I appreciate. That's what this show is, is just just trying to help educate and, and just give value to people. And so we are just excited to have you again, because you know the world, right? That's that's the thing I think that separates you from everybody else is most people who want to get in and talk about medical device. They've heard stuff, but it's like I joke around. People think it's just hanging out with doctors, making a bunch of money and chilling. <laughs> but you you know know the world of it's it's far from that. So we appreciate, you know, you understand where it's from. Um, but being able to have those conversations and you're a hundred percent right when you talk about those financial conversations come up all the time um and, and and with doctors with just people in the or and just even just staff right it comes up all the time and i just say this i this is something dear to my heart um because like we were talking offline you know when we both you know when you come out with nothing and you're trying to start something you're like hey how can i never go back to you know like yourself sleeping in a car when i first move out somewhere you know so that's why i'm excited to bring this show today uh to everybody listening again this this is for you guys in medical device or trying to break in but also if you guys are just a listener this is stuff you should start thinking about your future because not a lot of people do um but daniel can you kind of go into when you talk to most of your like clients and stuff what are kind of the topics that come up and, and what you really help with um, when somebody's got reaching out to you about what what should I do with my money? Yeah, great question. So I say there's three major categories, and um, hopefully the folks listening are sports fans. I always use a sports analogy when I explain this. Uh, the three major sectors that we talk about are offense, offensively, the investment side of things, right? They're putting money into a 401k or ESPP or they're getting IRSUs. Maybe they have a brokerage account or an advisory account with somebody that they're trying to gain some market 
capital from returns. So that's the offensive side. How do we be strategic and aggressive to capture returns uh, for our future, you know, gain some capital? Uh, the other side of the ball, which is the defensive side of the ball, which is risk management. How do we protect everything? How do we keep everything from catastrophic events or some sort of life issue that could disrupt saving for the future? Um, and I think one of the big misses there is that the defensive side of the ball can also score some points. So how do we utilize proper risk management to not only protect, but to potentially gain capital and grow our assets so that we're not just having some sort of static you know, policy or static kind of a, a coverage that protects us? And then, you know, the kicker for most sports games, right? Special teams right there in the middle, tax mitigation. Uh, the obligation of taxes is a drag on your returns like people don't recognize. And I share that with you because everyone talks about typically, what is the market doing? What's my return? But what we're unrealizing is when Uncle Sam comes at the end of the day, knocks on our door and says, hey, yo, Jacob, guess what? I'm going to take about 30% of your 401k or capital gains tax, which we're currently talking about raising significantly. Yep. And so that right there, you, you have to be aware of it. You just have to. And full disclosure, right? I'm not a tax professional. I'm not a CPA. Talk to your local tax professional about your, your filings. But as far as your investments and around actual returns, tax drag is something to be aware of. Yeah, no, 100%. That, I appreciate you saying that because that's a talk I have with a lot of people, right? People see the average salary of a medical device sales rep uh, and they're like, oh, I'm going to be making making crazy money. And, and again, you can. There's the opportunity to do that. But a lot of people forget Uncle Sam and they forget coming in and hanging out. So I, I appreciate you <laughs> saying that because that is something to be aware of. But like you said, most people, again, I appreciate you saying this, is most people don't know about 401k getting taxed when you know when you're trying to pull stuff out like th that's just something that they're like hey i just put money away and now i'm rich right and then you learn about you know like the capital yep. gains all the other stuff that comes with it so that's why i'm excited to have you on just to be a little more strategic and and add that value so jumping into that first one going more on that investing that offensive side what what do you kind of usually see what do you recommend and, and just would love to hear your thoughts on that yeah, so no specific advice given, right? I can't give recommendations. It's individualized per client, but broad strokes, really general strokes. Um, investing is about creating a really balanced portfolio, in our opinion, not, not a heroic approach to what we do. We're not going to outthink the market. Um, what I think the folks on the call can resonate with is where we, we look at our clients is we, we have what's called an open architecture investment philosophy. And what do I mean by that? So most of your listeners who are in med device can really relate to the fact you go into an office to talk to a doctor with your product. And the first thing the doctor or the staff says is, yeah, no, we're not going to use you because we're on contract with this company, or I have a relationship with this rep. So just forget about it. And what that means is you're limited. That doctor has limited his patient's care by our relationship and or a contract. So they're specifically going to use something because of the environment that they've created. Very similar to investing. A lot of these major wirehouses own their own funds. You go onto your statement for any one of the major wirehouses and you're gonna see that mutual fund or that ETF on your balance sheet. And is why is it that they're doing that? Because it's their proprietary product. Yep. So for us, we don't have any proprietary products. That means open architecture means fair game. We have no allegiance to any one fund. It's who's ever performing the best. And that's a powerful position to be in because if you as the rep could go into any physician's office and they would say, yeah, bring in your product. Let's see who's the best for my patient. We'd all want that scenario. Yep. And so for investing purposes and going after the market and being strategic about what your asset allocation is and risk tolerance, that's all basic stuff. But then it comes down to what are we choosing? And if we have the availability to have no allegiance to anything other than your performance as a client, that's something that we're really prideful in and we, we find to be extremely valuable, like a boutique style, you know, very close niche uh, um, investment portfolio that we work hand in hand with you on. Yeah. And that's huge because that's a, that's a talk I've had with other reps, right? you like, we talk about, you know, usually with a company, if you're with a bigger company, they're going to give you a 401k, but just even looking at the different 401ks. And when you talk to, you know, some of the professional professionals like yourself, some of them can look at it and be like, 
I've seen better, <laughs> you know, like I've seen a lot better options uh, and I've seen worse, right? That th There is a big difference with certain companies. Like you said, if they're going to push certain ones and they have contracts with others that it, it's huge. So I, I appreciate you saying that. Yeah. It's just, you know, it's just an awareness, right? Nothing. There's no bad really, unless you're working with somebody who's just, you know, uh, being obvious about uh, being dishonest, but the really strategic part comes into play is, Hey, when you have, proper investment strategies, you, you're allocating your assets properly to your risk tolerance, right? We're going to talk more about risk management in a second and then tax mitigation. How do you blend them all together? And the unique spot that we're at with Northwestern is that there's not many other portfolio managers out there or advisory brokerage accounts that are going to do that. You talk about the major wirehouses, their focus is investments. You talk to risk management companies, their focus is risk management. The boutique, the boutique, excuse me, the boutique style of combining the two together is the future for us in investing. And I'll share with you Ernst & Young, which is one of the major uh, financial analytic firms in, in the country, independent, uh, just did a publication on this. They did the publication on how combining proper asset allocation, proper investing with risk management together is the best way to save for your future. It comes with three major assets. One is you're going to have more assets in the future because you're properly allocating. Two, you're going to have more income in the future because of the strategy. And three, the best chance to leave a legacy behind. And that doesn't come from us. That comes from an independent firm. And so we're really proud to say that boutique style, no allocation or, or no allegiance to anybody in terms of funds is who's ever performing. Um, and this is being smart, right? There's a lot of layers below that are being smart of what investments to choose and, and how to balance your portfolio. I love that. Oh, that's great. And, and that's what makes it exciting. Like you said, you guys are able to, to be more specialized in what you guys do to, to make sure that you're helping your guys' clients. So I appreciate that. Now, again, going in from that investing, you said, so you have the offensive side to investing, um, but then you also have that risk management. What, what does that look like? Because that's something that personally, I'm not even that aware of. So I'd love to learn more about that. The risk management can include everything from wills and trusts, right? How to protect the family in case of catastrophic events, um, long-term disability, uh, long-term care, life insurance, health insurance, all the above, anything that would cause a disruption to your income. Um, I think what people really forget about when it comes to planning is the actual possibility of interruption of income. And it's, it's pretty staggering. Like I'll throw some numbers at you real quick, and then we'll talk more in detail about what this means. Is that for males between the ages of roughly 25 and 55, there's a 31% chance that you're going to have a long-term event, meaning you're not going to be able to work for past three months. That event will, on average, last 2.1 years. So imagine having no income without proper risk management for two years. How do you survive, Right. Everything in your portfolio probably gets liquidated. How do you pay for your mortgage? How do you pay for your food? Not even added to that, how do you keep saving for retirement or keep saving for college? So for females, it's a little bit higher. It's closer to 34% between 25 and 55. And that's not to be sexist. It's just because pregnancy, yep. childbirth brings a whole nother layer of problems with it. So, and again, that's about 2.3 years. So what we look at when it comes to the risk management side is income. We have to protect your income. Everybody listening to this call or listening to this podcast probably has an iPhone. They all bought Apple Care. Why? It's a thousand dollar phone. You guys can pay another thousand bucks, but you're not buying Apple Care for yourself on your income when you make two, three, four, five hundred thousand dollars a year. It just doesn't make a lot of sense. So, you know, I'd rather have the people on this uh, podcast who's listening respect me rather than like me. And I'll share with them, like, listen, it's a challenging conversation. It's not something we want to do, but you need to do it. And the the eye-opening piece that I'll share with you, Jacob, you're in this situation. Uh, you're working for a very large medical device company. They're giving you a salary. They're giving you some benefits. Yep. And then on top of that, you're making some commission. Average salary for a clinical specialist and or a territory manager, you know, in med device, somewhere between 60 and 80 grand a year, right? That's their salary. That's what their benefits cover. Think about this. You're making... $200,000 a year, 250 with your commissions. You're driving down the 405 in California on a sunny Thursday and a tractor trailer runs you off the road, right? You get in a car accident. You can't work for the next 
18 months because you're in rehab, you've got to figure something out. Your benefits package is only going to give you a percentage of your salary. So if you're making $60,000 of salary and you get on average in the industry, 60% of that through your benefits package taxable, you're coming home with 2,500 bucks. You're used to making 200, 300, $400,000, which is 20, $30,000 a month. Mm -hmm. You're going to go from 20 to $30,000 a month to 2,200, $2,500 a month. You got a wife, you got kids, you got a husband, you got kids, you're saving for college, you get a mortgage. How do you put that together? Share with me your strategy, how you're going to figure that out. So that's just one layer to think about, right? Why would we not, at a very limited cost, protect all of that? So no matter what happens, you're whole. You're getting your two, three, four hundred thousand dollars $400,000, and you can lay your head at the pillow and then go, doesn't matter. I'm yeah. good. Our family's good. Oh, yeah. And that's 100%, right? Because, you know, I'll be honest, that was one of the talks when I was a personal trainer full time, right? And I would talk with a lot of my people that were, you know, in the medical field or they were, you know, medical device or whatever it was, they were high and guys are always like, Jake, what happens if you break your leg? You know, like they were, they would just bring that up to me all the time. They're like, Hey, you're a personal trainer. You're in person right there. What happens if you get a car accident? Like that was something, what you're saying right now, it started hitting my mind early because these people would question me, Hey, you're doing great. You're doing a personal training. You might be making some good money. But what happens if you need to take a month off, take two months off, you know, like your income that you would be doing right now, it vanishes. So physicians buy into this. Physicians are really into the income protection because for interventionalists, procedural based physicians, they own an ASC, whatever it may be, that may be really relative to you and your market. They understand the power of if they can't work, how much their income is disrupted. I would challenge the listeners, medical device specifically, that's the niche that I understand and I was a part of for a long time. It's parallel. You guys are lugging bags, carrying product, wearing a lead vest, programming patients, standing in the OR. If you specifically can't do that for a long period of time, how do you create income? It's an exact parallel to what physicians do and take very seriously. So for the audience, it's something that's so simple. It's so simple. It's one of the biggest misses when it comes to planning for the risk side of it is that simple protection of their income so that they don't disrupt. And let's take it a step further. Let's, let's talk about how in this industry, we talk about malpractice. Yep. Right? Let's take two advisors, right? Let's say I had a competitor and you guys were consulting with both of us and you had $1,000 a month roughly that you were going to save towards your future, whatever instrument you picked, we wanted to save a thousand bucks. One advisor says to you, Hey, we're going to put all thousand dollars into X product. We're going to get this return and you're going to save some money for whatever college house, wedding, whatever it is. Myself. And I would say to you, Hey, we're going to take nine fifty and put it into an investment, whatever that is. We're going to get some returns on it. The other $50, we're going to protect you. We're going to take that limited amount of money and we're going to protect you. So no matter what happens, we can always put that 950 towards your investment, right? And say, what do we do? Is it malpractice for me not to uh, advise you to put that $50 towards your risk management? I would kind of say yes, because what happens in a year or two or three or five, if something happens and you can't work, that $1,000 now stops going towards your investment, right? So that's uh, interrupted. On the other side, if you put the 50 bucks aside, that very nominal amount, nothing gets disrupted. That yeah. 950 keeps going for the next whatever many years, all the way through retirement to age 67. So which, what would you rather have is the question. Would yep. you rather have that limited amount going to protection so that you always have your money going towards your future? Yep. hundred percent. And that, that, that peace of mind, right? Because like you said, most likely something is going to happen. It's, it's, you know, I joke around with people all the time. I actually just saw one of my friends. It's, it's why you get insurance, right? They, they got a door ding on their a rental car and they get this giant bill and it's like, they just have to pay the deductible. That's a small amount, but they're like, I've never been so, they, their message was that I've never been so happy to have the insurance and pay a small deductible for this giant thing. And I just think back to what you're saying right there. Yeah. I mean, it's just, we never want to think about that stuff, right? You know, for me and you, it's a beautiful Sunday morning. We're having coffee, it's sunny outside, right? I'm yep. going to take my youngest daughter to swim class here in a minute. I'm not thinking about that stuff. Yep. I mean, I'm invincible is what I think most of the time. <laughs> yeah. 
the reality is the environment we're living in, we've seen hundreds of thousands of people get sick yep. due to COVID. Um, add to that, you know, economic collapse, social unrest, things happen. People exactly. have been hurt. And so it's just really important for me to protect my family. I think most people listening are probably very mature and smart and understand this. They just may not know the details of how to do it. Yep. And what's, what's the pieces being put together by my company and what do I need to supplement? And what does that really look like? They probably think it's an astronomical number that they don't want to throw away every month. The reality is it's, it's very nominal. Um, yep. I mean, on average, you're talking 1% or less of your gross salary to wow. protect the entire amount. Think That's, about that. Yeah. That's crazy. And, and uh, the thing I want, want to just touch on, and I appreciate you saying is, is just maturity. Um, that, that is the conversation of this, right, is maturity of talking. Again, everyone listening, you, you, a lot of people, the talk I have with, especially young people reaching out, we think about today and that's it right? And we don't think about tomorrow. And, and that's the, just the reality, right? This is the conversation I have with my own family, right? When you mentioned like the will, we don't want to talk about people dying, but guess what? It's the reality. It's, it's going to happen. So would you rather just be prepared for it when that non-fun stuff happens? Or are you just going to, you know, it's, you think it's a roller coaster going through that, trying to do a roller coaster with no, no plans, no nothing. And now you're figuring out, you know, like what you're saying for a small percent, you could, give yourself that peace of mind that could help cover all these costs and all this stuff. Otherwise you go through a traumatic injury or traumatic accident. And now you're trying to figure out also the stress of what to do now. Cause I have no money. That's it. Here's the reality too. It's a pass fail test. And that's a bummer, mm -hmm. right? There's no redos. Yep. Something happens and you don't have the right allocation of protection in place. You fail. And I hate saying that to folks and how we know that is, you know, every time we see a GoFundMe page, it's like, man, we missed the mark. That could have been easily fixed, right? 100%. And uh, it's, it's terrible. But when you have it, you pass. Yep. Everyone's like, whew, thank God. You know, yep. thank God we made that decision. And, yep. uh, you know, this isn't fun stuff. I'd much rather talk about investment returns and talking about getting alpha from the market. And, hey, where do we put money to put your kid through school? And how are we going to buy that next house? But it's really important stuff. It, it's really important stuff. And... I can share from my side, being a father of two and a wife that stays home with them. I sleep a hundred percent better knowing that this stuff's in place because if something were to happen to me, I want my family not to be disrupted. Yep. And you know, some of the folks who are listening are here, maybe single, they don't have kids. This doesn't mean anything to me. Well, you want to move back in with your parents? Yep. If something happens, what do you do then? You going yep. back with aunt and uncle? Is that is that a place to where you want to go in the basement back in, you know, I don't know, wherever you're from? Yeah. Maybe that's fun for you, but I'm not moving back to Pennsylvania <laughs> living in my brother's basement. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> no, 100%. And this is the conversation I have. Like you said, the past failed. This is the reality. This is the talk I have with my own family, right? All it takes is what you're saying. Again, you don't want to think about the, the, the bad stuff happening. But if you guys have lived enough life, you know, you know that there's stuff that happens that you can't plan for. And we, and we all know that. But like you said, like that's the, the conversation I have with my own family. Like I was saying is, you know, it just takes one event, especially like my brother, he's in construction, love him to death. But I'm like, dude, it takes one bad thing, one big lift, turn, you hurt an eight, something like I'm in the medical field. I know what medical yes. surgeries cost. Right. And like, that's what people don't understand is like, if you're, if you're not taking care of yourself, one event can now put you in hundreds and thousands of dollars of debt and, and, and the stress. And then, like you said, a lot of times it's, if you're not, if you're not prepared and again, you don't have this crazy salary and you're not, you're not digging that hole out. Like you're not getting out of it. And then, then like you said, you're going, doing the GoFundMe and relying and hoping on other people to help you out. Otherwise it just is what it is, you know? So again, like we said, well, I know for the listeners, maybe this isn't as like uplifting and uh, like, Oh, it's great, but it's the reality. Right. And this is the thing that, you know, this is the talk I have with my family all the time. Like I love to be all joyful and sunny and, and think about the greatness, but in the reality, you also have to be realistic. And, and like you said, the stats are there, right? 30%, like the stats are there. They don't lie. And there's a, there's a 33%. There's a one third chance almost that mm -hmm. you one out of three guys, something's happening to us at some point in our life. So just, just to think about for everyone listening. Yeah. I, I completely co-sign that, right? This is not the funnest topic. I totally get that. Right. It's not, ideal but it's important it's really important stuff 
You know, uh, your financial health, I think, is very close second to your physical health. And if you don't have the two, you're, you're going to kind of struggle a little bit. Um, and having lived that life for so long, 10, 12 plus years and traveling and caring, like you guys are grinding it. Yeah. You're grinding it. I know what it's like to wake up at four in the morning to go drive to a case for a patient at 6 a.m. start time. And the damn patient ate a bagel. And then you can't even do the case or you wait two, three, four more hours because the patient didn't show up on time. And then the doctor cancels the case. Right. And you've lugged all your stuff in. You're working so hard. You're just working so hard. It's it's a industry that most people can't relate to unless they've been in it. Yep. They just think it's rainbows and Skittles and people are having a blast and making a ton of money. The reality is, is you're busting your butt. Maximize your income. Yep. Right. You're making good livings. Protect it invest appropriately, think about your future because no one's ever going to look back. I can promise you this with all the clients I work with. No one ever looks back and goes, man, I wish I wouldn't have saved that. Yep. No, no. one will say that to me. You know, <laughs> every one of my clients, I got a bunch of folks in the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, will say the same thing. They all progress to the same stuff. They get older and they ask me two questions when they're getting close to retirement. One is, do I have enough money or am I going to run out? And two, what can I leave to my kids? Right. And that's the retirement one. The ones that are in their, their 40s and have the kids, it's like, hey, am I on track? Am I even close? Can I put my kids through school? Right. Can we pay off this house? Can we still go by on vacations? And so it takes work. It takes discipline. It takes work. I totally get it. Uh, but it's very doable. If you have the right strategy, you have the right plan that moves with you through life. It's very, very doable. And you'll be, man, you guys will look back on this and be like, I'm so glad I did it. I yep. really am in it. It's hard to look at in your early stages of your career, but just ask your, your parents, ask the people who are longer in the industry what they think, and I'll, they'll share with you that for sure. Yeah, 100%. And the thing I want to just piggyback off on that is, you know, I this is, again, what I was told when I was trying to break in. So just to everybody, again, a lot of people break in, they want to make this career and, and make it like 10, 15, 20 years, which is great. But just the reality, you know, like I would talk to some of these managers and I was 25 trying to break in. And they're like, Jake, get in, do it for 10, 15 years, and then you're set. You know, you're, you're 35, you're 40. If you're smart with your money, you don't have to do this, right? Like you, you can, and if you want to keep continuing to do it and you love it, but you want to so much have to, as long as you're smart with your money, make good investments, do that stuff. And then you can maybe go do something else. And I, and I just always say that, you know, I said this to somebody who reached out to me the other day and all money is, is it buys back your time. It buys back your peace of mind because I just say this to everybody. If you had more money in the world, know what you want to do. You want to do a job you didn't want to do. And I'm not saying that about medical device. That's just anything in the world. Right? So that's where, what to your point, Daniel is like everybody who's listening just think if you worked 10 years and worked your butt off and you could, and if you did it one way, you could be, have the freedom to, you know, go maybe not work a high stress job and just chill and maybe like be a little easier on your life. Or you can still go and be the other way where you didn't plan. And now you're 10 years in and you're like, you overdid stuff. And now you're like, I really have to keep going. I have to work even harder because mm -hmm. I've done stuff. So that's just the talk I have again, never pushing away from medical device. But this is the talk I actually had with people when I was trying to break in is they're like, Hey, Jake, here's the reality. If you're 25 year on 25 years old, and you come in and you just crush it for the next 10 to 15 years, you know, add that up, that's 40 years old. Well, if you did smart things, you know, you have a lot of all it is is freedom. It gives you the freedom at that day, point. Optionality. Optionality is what everyone wants in life and basically every circumstance. Where can I eat? Where can I go for a restaurant? What gyms? You know, where can my kids go to school? Where do we go on vacation? You want options. Yep. You're going to want options with your money older, uh, older in life as well. Or even, you know, uh, just at some point, you're going to want to say, man, I don't want to stand in the OR and program a patient who is half asleep because they're under Mac, right? I want to. <laughs> Teach kids. I don't know. Whatever it is, like there's there's things that change in life as we grow. I mean, listen, uh, mine is Legos. There's not much I still love from when I was a kid. So yeah. <laughs> like things just change. We we want different things. Hundred percent. And like you said, it, like I say this all the time, right? Like I can't wait till one day be a, a husband and a father. And and there, but at 25, 26 year old single, my where I'm thinking and what I think I'm going to be doing is going to be way different than when I'm 35. And if I'm married and have kids at that time, like priority switch and, mm -hmm. and it's just life, you know? So it's, that's what this is all about, right? Like you can think one way, but it's even going back to the risk management. You think one way till something happens. And then, you know, Mike Tyson, it's all great till you get punched in the face, right? Man, I love that one. 
I love it, right? And uh, it's perfect, right? There's different things that happen. And we, we're talking about income protection. There's other layers to that, right? What if someone's no longer with us? Yep. Right? You know, you're a husband or a, a wife and you got kids or you got a family or, you know, uh, for the younger folks, a lot of you will look at your scenario and say, hey, listen, I don't think I need life insurance. I don't need protection for, for me. I don't have kids. I don't know what. We, we, we deconstruct that and say, hey, do you think you're going to want to care for your parents when they're older? Are you going to want to give them support when they're in their retirement or if something happens to them physically? And a lot of the clients say, oh, yeah, yeah, I didn't think about that. Well, what if you weren't here? Would you want to provide resources for them to replace just you physically because you could provide for them monetarily? And these are things that, again, we don't want to think about, but they're really valuable pieces. When you put the entire portfolio together, mm -hmm. hey, are we investing appropriately? Are we protected appropriately? All the while, are we looking at how to you know, minimize our tax obligations? These are the things that the folks on, that are listening should really be thinking about because life goes fast, things happen. And you want to maximize your earnings because you guys are doing great and you're working so damn hard. There's there's no reason to lose that. 100%. 100%. Oh, so I love that. If you guys didn't, please go back to the last five, 10 minutes and, and just re-listen to that. Because again, like we said, maybe it's not always the most fun, but it's the, it's the mature. It's the thing that's going to help you and your family the most in the future. So mm -hmm. I appreciate that, Daniel. Now let's go to special teams. Let's go to that. To, I'm going to butcher it. Tax might mitigation uh there, there we go, go. Yeah. i can finally i can finally <laughs> talk um so going into that uh let, let's go dive a little deeper into that for the listeners yeah tax mitigation again uh full disclosure right not a cpa so tech, check with your local tax professional about how you're doing your filings but what we mean by tax mitigation is um people don't typically think about the tax obligations associated with their investment instruments right and uh we're in an environment now where our, our, you know, our government's looking at raising capital gains, short and long, state taxes, um, fiscally from the government, they're printing money like it's free yep. for stimulus packages, which listen, I totally agree to in terms of stimulating the economy, but I'm not a complete fan of how much, yep. to be honest with you, because where are they going to recover that from? Yep. Taxes. So we have to be prudent when it comes to planning for your future and say, hey, what do you have in place? 401k is going to get taxed as ordinary income. If you guys don't know that, you've never gotten taxed on your 401k. So at some point, Uncle Sam's going to go, hey, I'm here. I'm taking 30, 35% of that when you withdraw that when you're in your 60s. So you might think you have a million bucks. You got 700,000. And people are like, what? Wait, huh? Yeah, that's one, right? Cap gains, short or long, depending on how long you hold the asset. We have to be aware of that. Then there's tax-free, right? You've heard of Roth, Roth IRA, mm -hmm. tax code 7702, which is ideal, meaning no tax on the growth, no tax on the distribution, um, which helps accelerate your returns. It doesn't erode your returns because of your tax obligation. So when we talk about tax mitigation, we talk about, do we have all of these in place? Because depending on what the environment of the market up or down the economic structure with taxes and how much they've raised or lowered, do we have different levers that we can pull in terms of distribution? So for example, let's, let's, let's talk through this for you, Jacob, personally. Let's just yep. say, hey, you're 65 years old you, you're, and you're walking into retirement and you call me, I'm your advisor and you say, hey, Daniel, I need a hundred grand a year to live. Yep. Okay. Well, we pull a hundred thousand dollars out of your 401k. Well, we forget I didn't forget, hopefully not, but maybe you never know. 30% <laughs> tax bracket, roughly. Let's use round numbers. You're going to clear $70,000. You're going to net $70,000 from that $100,000 out of your 401k. And you call me back and you say, hey, Daniel, listen, you're terrible at math. And I can't believe I used you as my advisor because I need 100. You gave me 70. I say, oh, okay, okay, okay. I apologize. Let me redo this. We have to pull upwards of north of $150,000 of your 401k, which bumps us into a higher tax bracket to net that $100,000. So now we're liquidating over $150,000 of your 401k assets to net the, uh, the $100,000. Mm -hmm. What if we could do a combination? What if we had a tax-free instrument, for example? We pull roughly $60,000 out of your 401k, we're at roughly a 20% tax bracket, 
You're only paying ten to twelve thousand dollars in taxes to Uncle Sam. You're netting fifty. We take fifty out of a tax-free instrument that Uncle Sam can't tax. Yep. We combine the fifty and fifty. We net our hundred, but we've only paid ten to twelve in taxes. Yep. Now you do the delta between the over one hundred and fifty in assets at a forty percent roughly tax bracket and the the, the last one, which is the sixty thousand out of your four hundred one k at a twenty percent tax bracket. That's forty, fifty thousand dollars a year in yep. taxable income. You times that by twenty years in retirement, it's a million dollars of assets that you're extending over a period of time by having proper levers to manipulate throughout distribution in order for you to maximize your assets. Yep. And now, if you don't have that, you know that's a hole that you've been painted into. And it goes back to earlier in our conversation, we talked about the Ernst & Young article and they describe that very well in that publication. And I can send it to you, you can put it in the link to this podcast, but it outlines when you put really good investing strategies in with tax-free instruments, uh, specifically certain ones that I'll, they can reference. Uh, I won't put on here, I don't wanna cause any kind of a compliance issue. <laughs> you can reach out to me, I'll explain more. Um, but that's where you're gonna get a better opportunity to not, outlive your money, have more to spend, leave a legacy, right? And that's what we're talking about here, right? Maximizing our earnings. Yep. Again, like you said, you worked so hard to get it. The one thing I want to just reach out to everybody who's listening, you know, when, when Daniel uses 100K and, and then you're back to 70K, a lot of people are like, oh, I, I take 70K. Again, the, the, the numbers go up and down, right? Like, because I, I hear this all the time in MedDevice. Hey, if you're making 150 and I'm like, oh, maybe you only make 75. Well, 75 is still a lot, right? It's well, just think about this to everybody who's listening. What happens when you work so hard and you were going to make $10,000 a month and you got promised you're going to make $10,000 a month and then you get your paycheck and you made $4,800. Yeah, you still made $4,800, which was probably more than what you were making if you're looking to go up. But what happens when you were promised and you know how hard you work to make it? It's the same thing for the taxes, right? When he's saying 100K, how would you like to know you work so hard, you the, the gut, sweat, and tears, and, and hours and sacrifices you made to have this 100K, and now it's you just got a third of that taken away just because the Uncle Sam says, I want it, right? That's where this is. I'm just trying to bring, bring it more relatable to you know, if you're listening, you haven't broken into medical device sales. Maybe you think sixty, th maybe you think $100,000 is a lot of money, and it is, but- Again, what, what happens if you're promised $100,000 and you only get 45 of it? What if you only get 50 of it? You, you'd probably not be so happy after that. Yeah, and, and that's a very fair statement, right? For the listeners who may be just trying to break in, you're hearing these numbers of 100K, 150K, and you're thinking, man, that'd be great. I could live really well off of that. And that's a true statement, right? You're making over $100,000 a year in the United States. And you're, you're probably top 10% earners in the world. World, yep. So that's, that's a really good living. And I'm not diminishing that at all because I think $100,000 is a great income. But to Jacob's point, what you're going to find out is that the $100,000 gross, the overall compensation of $100,000 isn't what you're going home with. What you're going home with is called the net. That's what you're going home with. And that's going to be significantly less because you're gonna have benefits in there, state, federal taxes, depending on where you live. Um, for you folks in Texas and Florida, I know off the top of my head, luckily for you, no state tax. <laughs> but again, you, you, you plan on making a certain income and then it's not that because of the tax obligation. And as we referenced earlier, I would care to wager anyone listening to this podcast isn't gonna think taxes are going down anytime soon. <laughs> you know, And if you think that, well, probably should have another conversation but the reality is is they they pretty much are going to go up i think we can all agree on that and so then it becomes a, a you know a process of how do we figure out you know how much are we going to lose to that and uh you know listen i get it taxes are a necessary evil we got to support our infrastructure roads bridges government teachers unions etc but uh for us workers who are doing the job that we lose that it's tough to fill this wall sometimes a hundred percent, hundred percent. This is the talk I talk with everyone out here. Again, like I was telling you, I'm in Scottsdale, Arizona. I'm, I'm in the fortunate realm of, you know, being with people that are top earners that are going, but it's a different mindset, right? And this is the, the talk I always just have to listeners, even people who reach out to me every single day, you guys, it's all about mindset. Fin that's all finances is. It's, it's a mindset. But like when you think, uh, some people think like to your point, some people, I talk to financial advisors all the time. Some people think having $5,000 a month would be amazing. 
they're like, Oh my gosh, I would be set for life. Right. I only live off a of 30 K I'd have another 30, but then it's like, I know people who, if they had a hundred K a month, they're like, that's not enough for my retirement. You know, like it, it's just the levels of where you're at fine in the mindset financially where you're at. Um, so, but I just want to push that out to every single person is, you know, it, it, it's wrapping, coming to terms with, you know, like you're going to work hard, you're going to do whatever it is. It doesn't matter where you feel you're at with the finances, if it's a hundred K a month, if it's 5k a month, but at the end of the day, what Daniel's really trying to touch and have you guys here is taxes aren't going away. And how would you feel? Let's say you're at 5k to only get 2,500 of it. And now you have to, instead of living off 5k, you're living off 2,500. Same for that guy who, what if I wanted to live off a hundred K well, now he's only getting 70 plus there's other stuff that comes up. Right. So it's just, again, for that mindset of you guys going in investing, it's, it's for that future, but just understanding, you know, like the reason Daniel is going into so much detail in this is because it's protecting you, right? It's, it's just, it's what I tell everybody. I work my butt off. I don't work my butt off for free. You know, like if there's not a, if there's not a bigger picture in it, why am I, why are you waking up at 4am? Why are you spending doing 14 hour days? Because if you're just doing it for free, like God bless you. But like, usually there's a little bit more behind that. Yes. A hundred percent. Totally agree. Like, listen, we're all doing the same thing. We are all trading our time for money. Whatever you're doing, if you're selling med device, you're trading your time with your friends and family or whatever you want to do in life, working out to go sell med device. I'm trading my time with my family and or, you know, laying at the beach <laughs> to go help people with their finances. So your time's extremely valuable. Mm -hmm. You will learn that. If you don't know that already, you all know that already. But if you don't know that, the older you get, man, the more you think about how much time you have and what you'd rather be doing. So if there's a way that you can leverage how hard you've worked to maximize your earnings in just really strategic ways that don't disrupt your monthly lifestyle, I'm not asking you to never go out with your friends or never take a vacation. I mean, uh, I'm addicted to Air Jordans for God's sakes. Every time Air Jordans come out, I'm like, I got to get them. And I'm, it's not, you know, I'm not limiting that stuff, but it's, there's really simple strategic things that you can do to set yourself up so that when you're in life, you have the options to make choices. And then you can decide, well, what do I want to do with my time? Because that's what you're going to ultimately want to have to decide is, is what do I want to do? And how do I have power over them by making good choices? A hundred percent, a hundred percent. Daniel, thank you again so much for just coming in and taking time out of your day to like educate our listeners. Cause again, I, I took notes. I, I, I learned stuff. So I appreciate you just coming in and, and just sharing your knowledge. Uh, it truly means the world. Um, can you, is there any closing remarks that you have? Um, and also where can people find you at if they want to learn more? Yeah. Uh, I appreciate being here, man. It's been really fun chatting with you all morning. Um, I say I would close out with just a simple statement. If if you're curious about this stuff, you're not sure how it works, don't be fearful of it. You know, if you don't want to reach out to me, reach out to somebody, get referred to somebody. Uh, logistically for me, it's a simple conversation. You know, it's, there's no fees associated with the analysis and kind of the introductory process of, in terms of how we would help you get organized. So just reach out, find somebody that you can work with because it's going to be important and the planning will be fluid. It'll change throughout your life. So reach out to somebody. It's super easy to do. Um, that's what I would leave the listeners to is don't be afraid of it. Get out there, find someone to talk to you, reach out to me. And if you want to reach out to me, you can get on my website. It's daniel.rooney at nm.com. Um, or you can just find me on LinkedIn. You know, my name, Daniel J. Rooney, you'll, you'll see me on there, uh, link up and, uh, I'll help you any way I can, or get you connected with the good people in, in your market. Um, and just really appreciate Jacob, you helping educate the community that we both really care about, been a part of for a while. And uh, you know, hopefully everyone took something away from this. No, I know they took something away. So I appreciate it. Uh, the one thing I'll do, I'll link your links into the description. So you guys who are listening, just go to the links. You'll be able to find his website and him on LinkedIn as well. Uh, the last thing I do want to do before I close out, it, it hit me while you were talking. I just want to say why investing is important to everybody listening there's, there's a study that has gone out, but like, you can't save yourself to retirement. You can't like, even if you saved a million dollars, like compared to investing that million dollars, how much more money you would have, um, and be more set. So again, like I'm, I'm a personally, I'm a saver. I do investing too, but like I save, but like there's studies that have shown with inflation, with everything that's going on in life and with the world, you can't save your way to an, a retirement. So even if you saved a million dollars, 
you know, with like what Daniel said, with inflation, with everything that's going on, you know, if you invested that same million dollars or $500,000, you'd probably be better off even with that $500,000 contribution of investing than if you saved a million dollars straight cash in your bank account. Yeah, um, I perfectly said, you know, a fun analogy about that in terms of investing people talk about, I, I know that we were supposed to close this out, but let me ask you this, Jacob. you're on an escalator, right? You're in a mall, you're going from the first floor to the second floor, right? You have a yo-yo, you're throwing the yo-yo down, the yo-yo comes back up, just like the market goes down, goes back yep. up. When do you start investing? Oh. When do you buy into the market? You want to when it's down. Okay. So everybody says when the yo-yo is down, the reality is, is you want to invest when you first get on that escalator. I love it. The time horizon that you have, right? So everybody who's listening, who is afraid of the market and investing, the market will go up and it will go down. Volatility creates returns. You want that. The reality is, is the longer you're on that escalator, the longer you're staying invested, you're going to have a positive return because the market will go up and down, but your escalator is going from the first floor to the second floor. Yep. So the fear around the volatility of the market is natural, but the reality is, is that the volatility of the market is what's creating returns for us by selling and buying. So stay on the escalator, get on as soon as you can in your early career, yep. stay on it through your forties, fifties and get into your sixties. Cause you're going to have a positive return. The analytics show if you're in the market for over 20 years, 20 year period, there's a hundred percent chance that you're going to have a positive return. hundred percent chance. That's amazing. And then that's what I talk to people too, because we talk about this again, not to drag it on too much longer, but when people talk to me, they're like, well, I lost money. Well, how'd you lose money? Oh, I pulled out when it was low, right? Like if you don't pull out, you just stay in. Like you're saying, if you stay in for that 20 years, you're going to see the returns, right? But people, it's with anything. It's, it doesn't matter if it's this, if it's real estate, if you buy when it's high and then you sell when it's low, you just lost money. People are going to be like, real estate doesn't work for me, right? Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't matter what it is. And to your, your talk, you know, I've talked about this with breaking in networking, doing it's compounding. It's a compounding effect that just happens for that tipping point for you to break in, right? You met, met enough people, same thing for you guys, like in, in the investing, it's the compound. Because when you, if you invest from 20 to 30, that's way different than if you invested from 50 to 60, just because mm -hmm. of the amount of years that that money's working. Correct. Correct. You got to stay in it. You can't be fearful. That's the part of working with a good advisor coaching you through it, talking about the entire portfolio, how we're able to manage down markets, how we're able to get through that so that we don't get spooked and sell off. So uh, very valuable stuff to your listeners. And I know we extended that conversation a little bit, but that was a really, really valuable point. Yeah. And again, I appreciate you, Daniel. I thank you again for jumping on uh, with us and just taking time out of your day. Everyone, please go to those show notes. You can find Daniel and, and just reach out to him again, just to, just to have that conversation to start planning for the future you, because even if you're not in medical device sales, but you're looking and you're just interested in stuff, you got to make sure you're taking care of you. And that's what I tell everybody at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what company you're with, with who you're with, you got to take care of yourself because that's the only thing that really matters at the end of the day. Um, but for everyone listening, if you could please press that like and subscribe button if you are watching on YouTube. If you guys are listening to us on the podcast, please leave us a five star review. That's how we help grow this channel and reach more people and share about this awesome industry. And then if you guys are looking for just a little more resources, you guys can also find new to medical device sales ebook that is linked in this show description, where again, I just go in how I got four job opportunities and four offers from top 30 medical device sale companies with no previous sales experience. Uh, I put in messages I sent managers, my business plan, everything I did to get those job offers. So if you guys are interested in that, please go feel free to check it out and pick it up. And then again, reach out to me. I'm always happy to connect with you guys. I literally every day I get on, I'm having messages sent to people and I always get back. If I get it within five minutes, I'm usually calling it or I get back to you when I can. So reach out to me on LinkedIn, Jacob McLaughlin. If you guys want to find me on TikTok and Instagram, new to medical device sales, or you guys continue to listen on the podcast and YouTube. So appreciate you guys. I hope you have a great rest of your week and we'll see you on the next one. Peace.